Hey, how are you doing? Welcome to McCall Media TV with myself, Angela McCall. In this episode, we are basically going to be looking at how to customise your own Paid Membership Pro plugin for your WordPress membership website. Now, Paid Membership Pro, there'll be a link below link below but essentially it's a membership plugin that you can add to WordPress to protect and house your content your programs your digital assets things that you only want people like paid clients to be able to access so if you haven't been here before please do click that bell to subscribe and uh, stay notified to my YouTube channel I am a small channel and every little bit of help that you give me really helps me keep the momentum going and creating useful videos for you guys. Now, we're gonna dive on over to my left-hand monitor whereby we're gonna walk through a demo as to why we're gonna need uh, an example as to why you might wanna do this. So I'm in the middle at the moment of just customizing some content for my uh, Productize Your Knowledge and Sell Whilst You Sleep program. And one of the things that I wanted to do down here in the right-hand corner on the homepage is I wanted to have these four lines of sort of stats really about the membership so basically telling the member when they log on just reminding them when their membership started the name of the membership level that they're on as you can see at the moment I'm in a test environment um, then I wanted this particular date which was calculated and this is what's caused this video today so we'll come back to that in just a second and then we've got this membership end date now those the top two here this one these ones that I'm just highlighting now these are very easy to input onto your Paid Membership Pro website. In fact, they've got this blog article, again, the link will be below in the description, but basically it talks you through how to do this. Now they've got a whole series of short codes already pre-designed, populated, coded and everything. All you've got to do is highlight what I've got going on here, copy and paste it into your website page and you can basically swap out the membership underscore name as the field for any of these different um, fields that you could basically put the data on the screen for instead. So for example, if we go into the back end of my website on that page, you can see here that I have swapped that membership out for the start date. Then I've done the same thing here. I've put in the short code, but using the membership name. And I've done again the same here using the membership end date. So those three there, that's the end date, start date, and membership name that I've pulled in from here. And I've just customized that one line of short code. All of that work done for me. However, if we go back to my actual website page, I said to you that this is the calculated field. So part of my uh, productize your knowledge and sell whilst you sleep program includes a done with you service. So I give six hours of free technical support as part of the membership to those that sign up. And that six hours is only available for the first 12 weeks. So they can have access to this membership site for 12 months for an entire year. But in order to avoid procrastination and people snoozing and losing out i basically said to them look you know it helps you to get something up and launched quite quickly so i will give you six hours of free support for the first 12 weeks of your membership only so therefore i needed to calculate this date and that was easy to do because we knew the beginning date of when their membership started except that we actually needed to program this because this field doesn't actually exist already, which is what led me to have to create a customized piece of PHP code. Now, on this tab over here, again, the uh, link will be in the description below, but Paid Membership Pro actually provides um, custom uh, recipes they call them little code snippets that you can download now I'm going to go through this in part two because for the moment what I want to do is focus on how you write the code and then the second part will be showing you how to get this code onto your membership site and make it work so if we don't if we dive back on over to here, what I've done is I've gone into GitHub and I've managed to find this from Andrew Lamaza. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Apologies if you watch this and it's wrong. Um, but he has essentially done a lot of the heavy lifting for me and he had this code to basically create a short code for a start date. So half the work was done. What I needed to do was create my own code that then calculates 12 weeks from then. So I've now wrote this piece of code and I'm gonna show you it in 
Visual Studio. Now, if you haven't used Visual Studio before, I will put a link somewhere up on the top corner of this screen, over this, this corner. Um, I have a second YouTube channel called Point and Click Puzzle Games and Visual Studio is a free downloadable open source piece of kit that you can install on your computer and it allows you to write code. Now, you don't necessarily need to use something like that. You can actually just use a bog standard uh, notepad document However, um, obviously, if as I've got the tools already or loaded on my computer, it makes my life easier to do this for you. So let's quickly jump on back here to the code. So we're going to have a quick walkthrough. Now, PHP is kind of like the brains that run on the server where the website lives. So what happens is as this page loads into the browser, the browser reads from top to bottom down and it gets to this area here and it's like, oh, I need to do something with to display this text on screen. So if you remember behind the scenes that we've got this little bit of code here, this short code, and basically when the browser reads to this point, it's like, right, I've got to do something. So we've already installed, which is the second part that I'm going to show you, but essentially this short code is now going to say, go and do run and calculate what we need. So if we come back to this with this code now installed in the background again watch part two um, basically the code reads again top down so it, first of all it, we're telling it it's a PHP code so the browser knows what scripting language or coding language we're working in um, that's just a few comment lines of text to remind myself and to allow me to retrace my steps should I ever need to work out what I did and why I did it but if we actually look here what we've got down in what I've highlighted with the opening bracket there the curly bracket and the closing curly bracket this here is the function now what happens is that function gets loaded into the browser memory but nothing happens until it is called so it's like a set of rules that doesn't that's basically sitting there waiting to be executed and that execution command comes from this very bottom line at the bottom here so basically this bottom line has two sections to it it's basically saying add the short code to the, the the browser and put the information on the screen so first of all it identifies what the short code is so yes it's coming from our website here so it's like it knows the name so member without the square brackets but if i just select it without the square brackets for you so you can follow through so there's the short code name member underscore support end date the square brackets just make it realize it's a short code then if we minimize this and come back here and there it is inside the single quotes so that's the name and it's syntax perfect for what we've called on the on the page on our website the second thing this part here now tells us what function to run so if you look at what i've highlighted this is the actual function name so basically when this code come, gets loaded into the browser nothing happens then the browser gets to this point here this last line and it goes ah oh, i've got to add some short code i know which one i'm working with and this is the function that tells me what I've got to put on the screen. So it comes up here, and then the first thing it does is it works with these two global variables. The first one is the access to the WordPress database, and the second one is telling it what user to get. Now this current user contains lots of information. It's a bit like an array, whereby it will have the first name, last name, start date, level of membership, their address, and any other data collected on that user at the time that they registered with your website. So there's too much data there. So the first thing that we have to do is actually tell our code that we're looking for just the ID number for this particular user. So this is out of this user, this is what this little kind of arrow means. We are looking for just the ID field. And when we find it, we're going to store it somewhere useful for us to easily access in another variable called user underscore ID. So by the time we've got this line 17 and this is finished running, we now know who the user is and we know what their ID is. So if you think of the ID as a bit like a number plate for a car, there's a unique number per car. This ID is a unique number per user in your membership website so that they can easily be identified. So the first thing we're going to do is test now what this variable contains. So this is an if statement with just the one component to it. And it's basically saying if and that exclamation mark is the word not. So if not empty, as in if this field is not empty, as in it contains some information, we're gonna do something with it. And that's what this then happens to be inside the curly bracket. So this is where this 
task that we're going to perform starts and this is the task ending here. So these two lines of code are essentially now the calculation and bits and pieces that we want to do. So let's break this down. So this first line here, okay. Now this is quite a complex line in the sense there's a quite a few things going on here. The result of this is that we will have the start date for the user. So what we've got going on is two sections. We are going to access the WordPress database where we're going to get essentially the information that we want. So there's the opening brackets for getting the variable that we're looking for. So then what we need to do is find the user ID and we, so we're going to search the database on the user ID field looking for a match. So whatever the database ID says, so if it says one and our user ID is two, then it's a not a match. If our user ID is two and in the database and our user ID two that we've grabbed from the, the browser is two, then we know there is a match. So where there is a match, we're then gonna get this information from the, the WordPress database and then we're gonna store the start date here in this variable but we have to do something else to it first of all. Now this line of code here basically converts that, it's like a serial number, it's about sort of 16, 20 de digits long, and it's just like a whole bunch of numbers. Now that doesn't actually read as a date as us humans would read it. So we have to use this thing called a Unix timestamp, which is, think of it as like um, some code or a function that decodes, uh, think like sort of spies and James Bond and there's decoders going on and they're sending secret messages. Well, this start date is a whole random bunch of numbers that make absolutely no sense to us humans, but that's how the data is stored in computer talk, shall we say. So we have to convert it into human friendly readable format which is what this Unix timestamp function then does. And then when we've got this human readable start date for our user, we're going to put it somewhere nice and handy for us to use. Now that we have that, we need to do a calculation on it. So 12 weeks is 84 days. It's always safer to calculate via days than it is weeks. So we're going to take our start date. We're going to add to it 84 days using this function called string to time. And then we're going to overwrite the information that was held with our new calculated date. When we have our new calculated date, we're gonna do another check. We're gonna come down to this last bit here. So we're gonna do one more check, which makes sure again that the field isn't empty. So it's pretty much the same as the user ID, but where we was checking that the user ID field wasn't empty, this time we're checking that the start date field isn't empty or the variable I should say. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna return the information, but we wanna do one more thing to it. So we can format how this date is presented. So it could be a series of numbers. It could be in Old English as in the first ST day of the month. Um, we could just return just the name of the month. We could return just the date. We could return the time even. There's lots of things we can do. So with this, we're gonna take our date and we're gonna format it in the way that we want it to be shown on screen to our users. Now, if we return back here, you can see here that I've used the number two without a leading zero. We've used a three digit version of the word for September and we've used a four digit version of the year. I could have said zero two September in full and just 21. So there's lots of ways that we could have formatted this day. It could have been in English uh, in the UK, we would go 02. 0921 if it was a six digit date format so there's lots of different ways but i'm telling it that we want to make it um a j m and y so what does j m and y mean if we come up over here i've already navigated to the paid uh, the php website with some of this examples on here again the description is below but if you look down this page here we've got the j which shows the date of the month without the leading zeros. And it gives us an example there. So it will show just the first or number one, as it were, or if it was a two digit day, like the 10th of the month, it will show as one zero. Uh, we've got a capital M or capital M, uh, which is the short text representation of a month in just three letters. So there's an example, Jan or December, D-E-C. And then we've got a capital Y, which shows my month as four digits. Okay, and there are some examples. But I could have used a lowercase y and just used two digits, or I could have put in, um, use the S, capital S after the J, 
as it even tells you there, works well with J. So say it could be the first day of the month with ST or ND added to it. So there's lots of ways. This is just one of those things you could tweak and play with for hours. This is your, if you look here, there's subsections. So these are how the days could be presented. This is how the weeks could be presented. The months could be presented, years. And then you've got your time formats for 12 hour clocks, 24 hour clocks and so on. So it's a matter of playing. So again, the link is below. So I've chosen this format and that is written essentially in my code using the lowercase j space between the words capital M for the three letter version of the month and, and the Y, okay? So then basically we've now got it in the format that we want and we have to return it back to the browser. And then that's where the code executes. Now, if for any reason this statement here found that the start date was actually empty, then instead of returning the date, it would actually return the words no date. So something still gets displayed or returned to the browser so we know that there is a problem. Okay, so this is the code that basically I've adapted from Andrew LeMans's original uh, code which was talking about start dates. So that's available in my GitHub, which is over here. And again, the links are all below for you. So that pretty much kind of brings us to the end of this tutorial, which shows you how to code or manipulate your own custom PHP uh, plugin for Paid Membership Pro. What we're going to do in the next video that follows straight after this is basically then show you how to get this PHP script from our environment, say Visual Studio, for example, and out into our membership site. And there's three different ways that we can do that. And that's what I'm covering in the next video. So if you like this, please do subscribe to my channel, click that bell to stay notified. I am a small channel. I do this out of love and passion for my industry, not necessarily for the money because I haven't got monetized at the, man at the point of making this video. So your support is much appreciated. Thanks very much. And I'll see you on the next video.